brands acrylic paint. Basic paint, which actually a lot of comic book artists use. I like Golden Paint. That's my favorite brand right now. Uh, gallery Paint, which is what you guys have in the bookstore, which is Windsor Newton. Academy Paint. Um, so there's all kinds of brands of paint. Um, I think Golden is the best formulated right now. I, I, they, and they're expensive. They're expensive as all get out. Um, so, so Windsor Newton was created for the Queen England, so also very expensive. Um, whereas Basic and Academy are pretty, pretty cheap, but also pretty good, okay? And what's great about acrylics is, let's say you pay, sometimes you can pay $50 for a tube of paint, but if you use the medium and spread it out, you can make it last longer, okay? So you have different brands of paint. And then you have different consistencies of the paint. So you have your normal paint, which comes out of the tube, which you're used to. Squeeze it. comes out. So there's the good old normal paint. Um, normal paint consistency, you know, you can paint with a brush, you can do whatever you want with it. Um, so that is the paint that comes in a tube. The paint that comes in, and this might be empty, Let's see if I have one that's not empty, here we go. The paint that comes in one of these things, you squeeze like a ketchup bottle, so this is much more fluid and a lot. Uh, does anyone know Jail Jahuli, the glass artist? He paints all his glass first. He, he only has one eye. He looks like a pirate. Um, he can't. He can't put the glass in the stove because he doesn't have three dimensions anymore. He can't tell depth, so he has a hole. He has like 25 people that does his glass for him. But he paints with acrylics first and says, "This is what I want the glass to look like in, in acrylic paint." And he paints with these giant bottles. He squeezes it on. He does paintings as big as this floor, and he puts it on with giant brooms. He does these paintings, and so if you, you get paint like this, I think this might be the only one I have left, um, then it just, it just squeezes right out, so it's a lot more liquid to it. And then you have this stuff, which comes in um, this container, and this is more pasty, so this doesn't come out. This is, you know, and why, why make that? Why would you ever want to make that? Well, if you're painting on the ceiling, if you're painting a mural on the ceiling, you want to paint, you want to paint uh, with your, some artists paint sort of seated down and paint it like this, paint like this, and you don't want the paint to come into your face. Use this stuff. So this stuff is really thick paint. So acrylic paint comes in three different, you know, consistencies. And I've got a little of, of each in here. One of the things that uh, about acrylic paint is on any other paint, like watercolor paint, um, stays stays wet a long time, so you can just leave your brushes on the table. And when you're done with acrylic brushes or anything, you just stick it in the water, because once it dries, it's on there forever. And, and if it's on your brush, it dries on your brush, the brush is toast. It's gone. Um, so there's just paint, you know, as you can put it down in different ways. So you can always paint, you can always scrape through any of these. You can always scrape like this. You can't scrape through that very much, so that's different. You can scrape through these two paints, just how they come out of the tube. Um, so there's the different consistencies of paint. Um, a little bit more history on paint is that the color, like this color, which I got donated to me because this is the former Charlotte Hornets basketball color that now no one wants. Um, so I used to have a lot of those two colors because those are the Hornets, Hornets colors. Um, the color in acrylic and watercolor and oil paint is all the same color. The stuff that makes this blue, whatever that is, dirt or cadmium red or whatever it is, is the same. The difference is what it is put into. In acrylic, it's put into plastic. In watercolor, it's put into the stuff called gum arabic. In oil, it's put into oil. Um, so that's the difference. It's the same stuff. Like the red, the stuff in cadmium red is still the same cadmium. Um, and then, and actually red is made up with a little bit of gold. That's why it's more expensive paint. Um, but it's the same thing. So this is plastic. You're just painting with plastic with the red suspended in there. Um, so as a result, one of these things is, and, uh, if you if you have have acrylic paintings, you can't keep them in your car next to something, because no matter how old the acrylic paint is, at a certain point over 130 degrees, they turn back into liquid. So you, you got they, uh, no matter how old an acrylic painting is, uh, whereas an oil paint you can you have to really catch it on fire before it starts to melt. Same thing with a watercolor. But this is plastic, and plastic will return to its liquid state at a certain point, and, and that temperature is reached in the trunk of your car during spring quarter. So I've got some things down there. I'm going to use gla I'm going to use this glazing medium first, and we'll change. Just use a smaller. 
So everyone's going to get a chance to use this. So I'm just going to put some <coughs> over here. I'll give you guys all some, some of this. Um, and what this does is it just makes the paint transparent. So you can see this is not very transparent paint. If I put a line down here, if I paint over that line, you, if I depends, I can make it transparent or not. Depends on how much paint I put on there. But it's it's really a pretty opaque color. So I'm going to take some of this paint off here and I'm going to stick it over here. And I'm going to put some gloss medium. In it. Oops, I should put it here so we can see. So I'm going to make some gloss medium. So that just by adding this gloss medium, I think it's called glazing, glazing liquid here. It's the same thing. So now the color, because I've added the medium, I could add water and do the same thing, but it would actually dilute the paint. Whereas the color is going to stay the same and it's just transparent. So no matter how thick you make it now, it's going to get nice and you can get nice layers of paint on there. Um, and the thing about acrylics is the layering. That, that's what makes it. That's what makes acrylic paintings uh, interesting uh, in some ways. So no, now, by adding the medium, I've automatically thinned it out, where I still have the same color, but it's not going to get so thick. It's going to be see-through. So, oh, I should have gone to get the hair dryer. So you can get a pretty uh, solid color, consistent solid color with this glazing medium. So let's see what happens. Let's just go over that. So the way to use this transparent set of uh, techniques is so now this will work just like ink. You can do whatever you want with it. You can make a drip. You can add some water to this. And then you can use layers. So now let's say, let's take some, let's see what happens when we take some black, put some glazing medium in there. I've never tried that. This is how all my fire paintings, I don't think, trans, I don't think uh, black becomes transparent. I could be wrong. See now, so I've, I've diluted it. So it's not gray. Now if you add water to it, it's going to turn gray. But if I add gloss medium to it, it's not gray. No, that doesn't dilute black. Just makes it a little thinner. It's sort of a gray. You can create a, a full strength black, but transparent. That's sort of gray. And acrylics dry pretty quick. So now I've got the green mixed in. Look at how much I got a whole, I either dumped out this much green, I put the glazing meeting, now I have almost more green over here than I did with the, just the paint. So your paint can go a lot farther with mediums. So now I have this brown, so now I can put green over the brown. And still, so I haven't done all of it. So it's green, but you can still see the brown underneath. It creates that layering of transparency. You can just keep going. So for example, if you want to create a warm painting, let's say you even want a painting of a polar bear, but you want the polar bear to be warm. You're going to paint the whole scene blue. You can paint the whole thing with a little yellow or a little ochre underneath, and then that yellow ochre would come through the blue and warm up the blue. Um, same thing if you want a cold painting. Paint the whole thing blue first and then paint all the colors on top, and it'll have a cold, uh, a blue undertone to it. So that's what that's for. So one of the things that's really cool is this stuff. Oops. Let's use that. So this is just lava rock. See that stuff, and um, when you guys use this stuff, be sure to put the tops back on, so we don't don't keep the top off. Uh, it's called uh, coarse pumice gel. So you can just paint with the lava rock. Has a nice grating that the, the uh, chalkboard sound. So you can leave that on there and paint with it, or I can take this and put it in my green paint. Either way it works. So then I can just mix it with my green paint, and I've got green lava rock. Now I'm painting with green lava rock. Paint that over that, whatever you want. This is great if you want to do a building, if you want to do a, a desert scene. I have a lot of people, we did a whole, uh, um, one student did a whole uh, thing on the Gulf War, and they had a lot of desert scenes with various images over the top, Saddam Hussein, and they used this pumice stone underneath it in combination. The other thing I want you guys to try is this gel stuff. This is like painting with close-up toothpaste. I don't know why someone would want to paint with close-up toothpaste, but they have it. It's mainly 
only so it doesn't drip. This will not drip at all. Anyone know Thomas Kincaid? The painter of light, you see it in the stuff. And you can see, they, they say that the his actual brush strokes are in the paint. What he did was he coated the whole piece of canvas with his gel thing and put brush strokes in it. And then they put the print on top of that. So yeah, his, his brush strokes are in the paint, but that's because they did a print of the texture and then they did a print over the top of that. Um, so that's what that's for. I can mix that with the paint or not. That's another opaque medium we can use. This is the modeling paste. As you can see, it doesn't come off. It doesn't come off. And you just build, you can build up all kinds of layers with this stuff. So you can carve, you can literally carve out stuff with this. So I can carve through it, you can paint with it, you can create all kinds of rocks. You could stick sticks in here. Um, you can buy, if you go to the store, if you go to Michael's, there's a whole wall of this, of these bottles for different brands. And you can get marbles in here, you can get beads, you can get little rubber ants, you can get anything in these mediums. I could mix this in with the paint. I'll just put it in there with this. And mix it up like this. So I can paint with modeling paste. In theory, it doesn't dilute the color, although it is diluting it a little bit. And I could paint with this. So now you can paint with this really thick stuff and get all kinds of textures, and then it will dry just that thick eventually.